Okay, so have you guys heard the story of Joshua Bell? He, no, actually, let me do my intro because I want to tell you about Joshua Bell and this and the meaning behind the story of Joshua Bell. Okay, so let's go. Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of the So Flipping Extra podcast, a platform for me to express, explore, and connect and be so flipping extra. Why I hate you, Ox? Well, babes, because that's what brings me joy. So without further ado, let's get into the podcast because I need to tell you guys about Joshua Bell. Okay, so New York subway, there's this guy called Joshua Bell and he is playing a violin one evening. I'm, I'm assuming it's the evening. I don't know why, but whatever. So he's playing his, he's playing his violin and for 45 minutes, he the, a few people stop, they clap, they appreciate what he's doing and he raises 30, about $30 for the, his 45 minutes there. What people didn't know is that Joshua Bell is one of the best musicians in the world. And two days before playing that 45 minute set in the subways, my man, Joshua Bell, sold out the Boston, the Boston theatre. His violin that he was playing on in the subway was worth $3.5 million. And eat for a seat at the Boston theatre, when, when Joshua Bell was playing, when our Josh was playing, cost $100. The meaning of this story is you can't shine in a space where you're not valued. Go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. People walked past this man, the best musician in the world, but it's not their fault. They're, they're not interested. They're not going, they're not going to know. And for me, this was, listen, hearing this story, I was like, for real, for real, for real. Sometimes you are not celebrated around the people that you even love the most. You might not be celebrated around your friends and your family. That's not their fault. People are into what they're into, but there is a community of people and there is a, a an abundance of people that you have a gift that you can share with them and they will appreciate what it is. And this is not me coming down on anyone who you might be triggered right now hearing me say this because you might think of yourself and think of someone that is in your friends and family circle and you're like, I don't support that person. Don't give them fake support. They don't need that. They need to. They need that support that is going to help them grow and help them pay their bills because the bills be billing, baby. <laughs> Yeah, social support is great. It's great because it gets it gets people out, you know, seeing your stuff more. It gets eyes on your work and stuff. But sometimes that's not enough. Joshi made thirty dollars in forty five minutes. He made millions two days before that, doing the same song where he was celebrated, where people came to listen to him because they knew what they were getting and that's what they wanted and that's what they expected. So even for yourself as the talent or the person and you feel unappreciated in a space, you have a, you have a, you have a responsibility to go, to put yourself in spaces where you're celebrated. And if you don't feel celebrated, move. It's like the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Oh, the cheese, you can't smell the cheese anymore. They've moved it, babes. They've moved it. Go find your cheese. The cheese isn't going to come back to you. And even if it comes back, it might not even be the same. Go find that fresh cheese because it's out of your comfort zone. And that's the story of Joshua Bell. I think it's amazing. I think it's an amazing story. Okay, so what else are you going to talk about today? So last week I started my tips on embracing your extra and unlocking your confidence and finding your authentic self. And I gave you five tips and then I expressed on one of them. And I said, every week I'm going to express on one of these tips. So just in case you missed last week's episode, go back and listen to it. But if you're not going to do that, the tips were <laughs> one, understanding and embracing your values, two, being patient, three, limiting phone usage, four, trying new things and stepping out of your comfort zone, and five, taking care of your physical health. So last week I, I went into depth on limiting your phone usage and how just the phones can really make you compare yourself. It's that comparing yourself to other people. They have this and I don't have that. Da, da, da. But if you limit your phone usage, you'll spend less time scrolling and you'll realise that you're amazing as you are, right? 
this week I wanted to focus on taking care of your physical health as one of the tips of embracing your extra, being more confident and finding your authentic self. So, you know, regular exercise and a healthy diet and good posture, good posture is so important, not only improve your physical well-being, but also contribute to a sense of self-confidence. When I look in the mirror and my skin looks good, I feel so good. And yeah, the skin on my face, but even just the skin on my body, like, you know, them little rough patches when you're like, oh, smooth right now. <laughs> Feels like a baby's butt. <laughs> oh. It feels like a smooth butt, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, you feel so much better. It gives you a bigger sense of confidence. But posture, I don't know if anyone else has noticed the way posture has just taken a nosedive. And you know what I blame for that? Phone usage. <laughs> We're going back to phone usage. But I examine people on their phones, their heads just hanging low. Even as I'm doing it, as I'm talking, as I'm explaining it to you guys, and my head, even just hanging my head down as I see these, and I say young people, it, it really isn't just young people, but they're on their phones on the train or the bus and their head's just low. And I'm like, I look at it and I'm thinking, in 30, 40 years time, the amount of people that are gonna, are gonna be hunchback is wild. There's this woman who lives in Kilburn. The, the hunch on that back is wild. I've never seen anything so hunchy. It's like the hills are alive. I'm not even being bitchy. It really is the hills are alive. But I just see a community of people hunched over because they've they've gotten so used to being on their phone. And I notice Kay do it sometimes. And I always just lift his head up. And I'm like, oh, I lift the phone up. Because you're right, your head is only that low because you're looking, you're looking at the phone. Hold it up. Hold it up high. This is my tip for you guys. My extra tip. Hold, when you're on your phone, just hold it up high. And we're... And just be aware, because your, hand, your hands are going to drop. They're going to go low again. Just lift it up high. Because if you're, you're following the phone. So if you're looking down there, just that feeling in the back, like stretch. Even if you don't do any exercise, stretch out your back. Because when you stand tall, you feel tall, you feel amazing, you look more confident. And people treat you a different type of way. And when people also treat you a different type of way, you expect that treatment. Your confidence is uplifted. You get to be your authentic extra self. And I love it. And I love that for you. That was my second tip. Come back next week for the third tip that I'm going to expand on, on how to embrace your extra and be more confident and be your beautiful, authentic self. Okay, so if you guys have been following the So and Extra podcast for a while, we are on episode 28. Wah, wah. You you will know that I do have an ongoing battle with fear of rejection and I am doing my best to overcome my fear of rejection. And I wanted to give a good news story because stepping out of my fear of rejection and allowing myself to be rejected has paid off. So I reached out to a brand that I wanted to collaborate with and I reached out to them last year. I DM, I slid into their DMs and um, they didn't, con they didn't, they didn't get back to me. So, you know, they have the generic message that goes out. Thank you for your message. Someone will get back to you. And they didn't. And at that moment, what I said to myself that I should have done was reach out again, give it a month and reach out again, give it a month, reach out again. But I didn't. Why? Because I didn't want them to say no. I didn't want them to ignore me again. So this year I did. So it was around the same time last year that I reached out. So I reached out again this year, especially with the Idol Home Show coming up. I thought it'd be good to, you know, get some sponsorship or whatever. So I reached out and again, I got the same message, someone would get back to you. And I, I forgot about it, out of sight, out of mind, onto the next thing, you know, ADHD brain and all that stuff. So a few weeks ago, maybe let's say two weeks ago, someone from that page actually reached out to me. And it was someone who I have done, worked with them as a particular person. So they let me know that it was them behind the page. And they let me know that they now work with this brand. And am I still interested in the proposal that I was proposing? And I was like, oh my God, yes. Yes, I am. So we went back and forth. And now I am an ambassador of their program and only because it hasn't 
I haven't received yet. I haven't received the product yet, but I've signed the contract. I'm not going to say what it is. So hopefully by next week, I'll be able to say what it is, but I'm so grateful. And it's just one thing. And that one thing that you allow yourself to be vulnerable with will open more doors for more things, more one things until they're 10 things. So Although it's like, okay, yeah, one thing, okay. No, no, absolutely no one's saying. I know you're like, go you, Danny. We're so proud of you. And I'm proud of me because, like I said, it makes me think, okay, well, like, I was there in enough. If they had said no, they had said no, it would have been fine. It's fine. I'm onto the, like, I, a no is, a, is an understanding. A no is better than not knowing. If they said no, I'd be like, right. X, they do not want to work with me. I can move on to the next one. And that's fine. So now that I've had that reaction with them and I had, it's great that I had a positive reaction because now I'm like, okay, if I had a positive reaction with them, now I just go on to the next one now. Now we do it again and we keep going and I don't do ones and ones and ones. Next time I do two. So that out of those two, one might say yes, one might say no. They both might say no, but then I can go again because I do have qualities and I do have, have, I have things that I can share and I have a gift and I have personality and I have pizzazz and people want to work with me. And by not allowing myself to put myself out there to allow these brands to find me and work with me and allow these brands to know that I'm available to represent you, I'm doing, I'm doing people a disservice because they don't get to experience all of this remember that guys I just want to highlight my son this week he on Tuesday was it Tuesday yeah on Tuesday my son went to Manchester so on Tuesday he went to Manchester for a a basketball game that he had on Wednesday and it was the CB something CBL whatever that means, cup finals. I should really get this information out. No, it's not really, that's not important. I just want to, I just want to talk about my son, if I'm being honest. (laughs) But it was the finals. He plays college basketball. He's absolutely amazing. And when I tell you he's amazing, you're going to be like, oh, he's probably good. But here's his mum. If you see my son play basketball, oh my God, it's just, it's, it's just electrifying. It's just, it's golden to watch the passion that comes from this boy when he plays basketball. So he went to Manchester and luckily the game was streamed via YouTube. So I was at the Idol Home Show and I was able to sit on the sidelines and watch my baby play basketball and for his college to win as well. And it was just so beautiful. And do you know what, do you know what really got me? So I'm watching the game and, you know, they're like, okay, um, Dawkins Ellis has the ball, da, 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 da. Dawkins Ellis steals, Dawkins Ellis on the rebound. Daw- I'm not going to lie, I felt famous. <laughs> I was like, they're saying my name. Like, obviously he has a double barrel name, but I was like, to hear my baby's name, just keep Dawkins Ellis, Dawkins Ellis. Every time they said it, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps every time I heard his name. And I thought, I, I visualised, I could just visualise him in the NBA and me courtside watching my baby play basketball and then saying Dawkins Ellis has the ball. Dawkins Ellis shoots and he scores from the free throw. Yes, Dawkins Ellis. And then, you know when, <clears throat> okay, I thought, yeah, yeah, I have to put myself in this visualisation. Otherwise, is it even a visualisation? You know, when the camera goes and they got me, they got me courtside, you know, when you're like, there and you're watching, you're watching. And then, you know, when the camera pans, so the camera obviously goes around the, the stadium and catches people and then they put the camera on me and they're like there's there's Dawkins Ellis's mum she's at every single game always supporting and then you know and you like I look up because obviously because I'm shy right I look up and I'll see the camera and I'll be like (laughs) trying not to look (laughs) pretending that I don't know the camera's on me because trust me baby I always know when there's a camera on me. You know when someone is trying to take candid pictures and you have to pretend that you don't see it because they're trying to make them look like natural shots? Please. I know know where every camera is. I know where the lens is and when it's pointing at me. So, yeah, I would be pretending. But, yeah, I just want to say how proud, proud I am of him. 
uh, I know we've done, a, I've done a podcast with Caden before. And if you get a chance to definitely go back and listen to that. He, his passion for basketball is amazing. And even he only started playing in year eight, which how old are they in year eight? Year eight or year nine? So let's say 12, 12, 13. And literally as soon as he started playing, he was on it. But the thing with Caden is he's always been very good at sports, always been sporty. So he used to do athletics. And when he was doing athletics, God, he was the fastest. He was the fastest. I'm going to say he was the fastest in Brent, London, UK, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's my sound. But he definitely was one of the fastest in Brent. And there was one time, I think he had um, he had uh, an injury and the school called me and they was like, we know he's got an injury, but please, can he come? <laughs> we need him. <laughs> and I was like, take him. <laughs> so yeah, but um, he's always been good at sports, no matter what sport he's done, even if he's just tried it. One time he went with his dad to some rugby thing and he played and they was like, he should play rugby. He's really good at rugby. Fo he doesn't even like football, but he's good at football. So it... Some kids just have it and he is just a very sporty child. And I remember one of his coaches at school saying that if he was in the States, he would be doing about five sports. Because when he was doing athletics, I was saying, you can't do basketball at the same time. And his coach was like, let him because he has to find himself and um, find what he loves. And if he was in the States, he would have done so many until he was able to pick which one he gravitated to more. Whereas over here in the UK, we just don't have those options. But... Caden Lee Dawkins Ellis, remember that name. He's going to be a massive basketball player, says his mum. Just saying. <laughs> okay, boom. So every week, I like to give you guys a manifesting tip, a tip to help you be a masterful manifester. And these are tips that I do. These are tips that I maybe don't always necessarily, I'm, I'm not Bible with my manifestation tips, but the reason I can give you these tips and say, I know they work because I've done it. And I want everyone to win because we can all win. There is a, enough abundance in this world for all of us. And as I tell you these tips, it reminds me of all the, everything that I've practiced. I've been practicing law of attraction for about, oh God, um, 15 years now is when I first was introduced to the, the, the secret. And I fell in love with just the practices. It just felt so simple. Just believe, just believe positive and positive things happen. What? It made sense to me. It's just, just believe, just believe good things come to you and allow good things to come. Believe bad things come to you, bad things come. Believe men are dogs. Woof, woof, baby, they be knocking at your door. And I truly believe that. We attract what we believe. So my manifesting tip for this week is, I'm going to go back to the beginning, actually. Because I feel like my manifest over the last, the last two that I've given you, there's some, there's some here and there's some here, but I'm going to send you on a journey. So this week, the manifestation tip is, we're going to go back to the beginning Get clear on what you want. Know what you want. Write that shit down. Go back to basics. Grab a pen. Grab a paper. Do a brain dump. Everything you want. Be so specific. Don't just say, I want a car. Visualise that car you want. What car do you want? What colour do you want it to be? What's the air freshener that's inside that it smells of? What's the interior look like? Be so specific. You can't just write, I want to have a successful career. Write what you want that career to do. What is it that fills your heart? When you think of that career, I'm rubbing my heart as I say this. What is it when you think of that career? What is it that you're doing? What are you wearing? Visualise it. See yourself in it. How does it feel? feel? Feel, I'm pretty sure Phil was last week. How does it feel when you think about and you visualise that career that you want, them six figures that you want to earn. And maybe you don't want to earn six figures. Maybe you're just, maybe you just want to retire. Maybe you just want a simple, easy life. Maybe you want a big home. Where's your home? What surrounds your home? What's inside your home? How does your home smell? Smell it. How does it smell when you walk through that front door? Who's there when you walk through that front door? Get clear on what you want. And 
yeah, that's it. Actually, I'm going to leave it there. You want more? Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Come back next week. <laughs> we're going to expand and we're going to have more manifestation tips. With that said, we are nearly at the end of week 28. So flipping extra podcast. But you know, I can't leave you guys without giving you gratitude. Gratitude is so, so important to me. I practice gratitude daily. I like to say I write it down and sometimes I do, but I don't always because it is just, it is part of my DNA. I have been doing gratitude again for 15 years. And when I first started, I used to find 10 things a day that I was grateful for. It allowed me to find the big things and the small things. When you're doing 10 things you're grateful for, baby, you start saying, I'm grateful for the the bus driver who waited a second so I can get on the bus, which didn't make me late. I'm grateful for the penny that I found on the street. Start, find a penny, pick it up. You'll find more next time. So now I just genuinely see the gratitude in everything, big and small, big and small. But writing it, there there is a, a connection with writing things down that we're losing now because everything is so digital. But my manifestation, sorry, my gratitude for this week is I'm really grateful to have been asked back to the Idol Home Show for a second year because if I was crap the first year or if I didn't do a good job the first year, I wasn't valuable they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have asked me to come back, but they asked me to come back this year. And I'm so grateful that they see value in what I do because I know, I know baby that I'm valuable. So it's great when other people see it. And I'm grateful that I get to be at the Idol Home Show and I get to share my gift because what I say and what I do is a gift. And yesterday being Friday, the 29th, Good Friday was my first day this year speaking out of all the days that I'm doing. So I'm doing three days all together. Yesterday was fr- Good Friday, the 29th of March. So I'm also there Monday, the 1st of April, and I am there next Saturday, so Saturday the 6th. This will come out on Sunday. So if you hear this on Sunday, you could come Monday or you could come next Saturday. And there's just looking at the faces of the people when I was doing my talk yesterday, they're getting things from what I'm saying they're actually learning something. And then they're coming and asking me questions after. I'm giving them tips and tricks on upcycling without having to sew. Not everyone has to learn to sew. People, you know, if people listen to what I'm saying, but you need a sewing machine that they don't have, or you need to know how to sew, which they can't do. Have I helped them? But to be able to to speak to people in the audience that are mums or they know mums or their grandparents and they can relay back the information that I'm giving because it's simple tips. I'm so grateful that I get to do that. And one of the tips that I gave, and I'm, I've, I talk, I say this every single year and the timing is perfect, especially because we're in half term right now or Easter holiday time. By the time the kids go back to school, if you haven't changed their school shirts already from long sleeve shirts to, to summer shirts, then what you're probably gonna do is go out and buy new packs of shirts. And then once they go back to school, we're in April, May, June, July, they have three months left of school in their summer shirts. However, the shirt, the winter shirts that they have might still be in good condition. And to be honest, if the sleeves are getting short, cool, cut the sleeves of them shirts into short sleeve shirts. Yeah, you can use a sewing machine and hem that, but if you don't have a sewing machine, go buy yourself hemming tape. Every speak that speaking engagement that I do, at every workshop that I do, I am always talking about hemming tape. Hemming tape, sponsor me, please. Because you don't even have to, because I'm always gonna share this. Whether I'm getting paid or not, I'm always gonna share it. Hemming tape is your is is your baby. Okay? Hem hem those sleeves, iron the hemming tape is you iron it on and turn their winter shirts into summer shirts. If your child is allowed to wear shorts to school and the shorts are just gray shorts, cut their trousers that are probably getting too short for them. They're looking like ankle swingers. Cut them into shorts, hem them up, use the hem and tape inside. They have their their summer shorts as well. So yeah, that's it. That's, That's my tip for the day. That's my gratitude and that is also my tip. You're welcome. If this doesn't apply to you, send it to someone who it applies to, tell them hem and tape, listen to Danny Dots, give them my Instagram and tell them to listen to me because I'm going to do some content this week on the summer, on upcycling your summer shirts, no so upcycling your summer shirts and if I can, I don't, obviously I have a girl but if I can find some trousers, some school trousers, (laughs) just to do an example, 
I will, because we need to save money because I said it earlier, the bills be billing. And if you don't have to spend money on their school uniform, boring school uniform, you can spend it on some summer clothes for them instead. And with that said, I have reached the end of this week's episode of the So Flippin' Extra podcast. One last thing I want to leave you with is let's stop procrastinating. (laughs) Trust me, it's easier said than done, especially coming from me. So we're going to say it every week until we get there. And then we're going to keep saying it every week until we get there. And we're going to support each other and we're going to help hold each other accountable. There are people that are suffering because of your procrastination. So again, Last year, I said I was going to do content on showing mums how to leverage their child school uniform because I I don't know if you're like me. I'm like, I don't want to spend money on school uniforms. Summer is a coming. I want to buy my baby girl some cute little summer shorts. I don't want to buy her new shirts. I want to buy her a couple of cute new tops for the summer so we can go out and be like twinning. I don't want to spend it on summer clothes. So if I can help you, that's what I want to do. And last year I said I was going to do these videos and I'd done them a couple of years before. I talk about it every year, but some people need the visuals. Show them how to do it, Dan. I never done it. I procrastinated. So last year I never done it. If I had done it, I probably could have saved a good couple hundred mums going out and buying summer shirts, but I didn't. So people are suffering from my lack of, from my procrastination. And you have a gift that you are, you are not sharing with the world. You are not sharing it with your community. You are not sharing it with your people on social media that could benefit from it. And if they're not benefiting, they could be suffering. Maybe you're an organiser. And I say organiser because I had a specific conversation with someone this week and they said they just, they couldn't talk, they were too shy. Baby, your, your voice is a gift. And someone listening to you, talking more and standing on a stage and talking about your journey through organising or how it's helped you and how you can help people and your tips and tricks on what to do can help someone because a lot of people that live in clutter, there's a mental health thing there behind that. Trust me, I know. And they just need that support. They need that guidance. They need that information. At the Idol Home Show, there's a lot of people talking about the same thing, but people are going to listen to people differently. Some people might make Brenda's talk, but they can't make Betty's talk. They could be saying the same thing, but even just because they were both talking, that you they got it. But also the, the tone of people's voice, the way they engage people is different for each person. So they might need you. Get them guts. <laughs> get the guts and get talking because you have a gift. You have something that the world needs to know. And by you not doing it, by your fear, by your procrastination, if that's what it is, People are suffering. And with that said, I've come to the end of the podcast. We got there. Episode 28. Come on. I love it. I'm here for it. If you enjoyed this episode, go share it. Share it on your social media. One, because it makes me feel good. Tag me in it so that I can reshare that you shared so that everyone can know that we got a community out here. Because the truth is, people follow because people follow. Sometimes people follow because they're like, oh, she really has people listening to her podcast. Let me hear what this podcast is about. So it really does help me. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say in it. So peace out. A town down. West side's the best side. Do I believe it? You guys know the answer. However, wherever I'm at, the vibe is at. And the vibe be vibing. We are a vibe over here. There's nothing but vibes. Good vibes only. And if it's negative vibes, it's none of your business. So you will never know. We just, we just exude all the good stuff, all the positive, good vibrations. <laughs> Guys, have an amazing week. I look forward to speaking to you again next week. I hope you look forward to listening. Bye. Mwah.